Hi, Ian. Thank you so much for joining me on Zoom. You hey, are. Nice to see you. Thank you. Yeah, you too. You are Ian Paul, and you are um, a friend of mine and a New Testament scholar in particularly Revelation. Yep. But uh, also, I asked you to talk to me today uh, because I'm thinking about maturity in the yes. Bible and in discipleship. And you are um, a really keen gardener. I and, am a very keen gardener. Yeah. And when uh, I visit you and your wife, Maggie, you always show me around the garden and the, the latest things that are happening. Um, you find it fascinating. Fascinating. It's so fascinating. And I love it. <laughs> um, I thought I'd ask you, uh, we're thinking about maturity and what it means to be a mature disciple. Uh, mm. But there's loads of organic imagery in scripture rather than kind of machines and that kind of thing. Or economics. Um, yes. Economics. So from your perspective uh, as a gardener, what does uh, a mature plant kind of look like? How does it get there? Um, let's think about that imagery. Yeah, I think, well, Eve, I think it's really, I found this a really fascinating question to reflect on. And I think in terms of what a mature plant or what a mature tree looks like, I think it's pretty straightforward at one level. And that is that a mature tree has two things on it in the right season. It has leaves and it has fruit. Now, of course, what we're interested in for gardens and decoration, very often we like the blossom or the flowers, whatever. But but for the plant's point of view, those are a means to the end. What's really interesting about leaves and fruit is that we might think both of those are attractive or functional. Actually, they're kind of the opposite, because on the one hand, fruit is what the plant is producing. And the purpose of fruit is actually not to keep us stop us from being hungry from the plant's point of view the purpose of fruit is reproduction the mm -hmm. fruit is there so that someone will eat it the seeds will go through and they'll be deposited somewhere so i've got when i've got mature plants in my garden what i tend to find is i get lots and lots of little seedlings growing up i've got a big yew tree and i've got loads of yew tree seedlings around i can dig them up i've got a walnut tree it produces the fruit the squirrels bury it and then i get loads and loads of walnut seedlings so one sign of a mature plant is it just reproduces itself. Yeah. And I think that's very much the idea behind the language of fruitfulness in the New Testament. We tend to think of it, we often think of it as qualities, but it's not really. When Jesus says in John 15 that, you know, uh, you'll be pruned, so you'll be bare much fruit. He's really looking at the ministry of the disciples, the 12, and that their testimony will produce more disciples. It'll be self-replicating, it'll be fruitful, it'll, be, it'll lead to multiplication. That's one thing. I think the other thing I find very striking about a mature plant is it's got beautiful foliage, it's got leaves. Mm -hmm. Now, again, we tend to look at it from a, you know, uh, a consumer point of view and say, oh, the leaves are pretty and glossy and they look nice. The leaves of the tree are the thing that sustains it. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you have a mature plant, uh, it feeds itself, it sustains itself. It's already got its roots down deep so it can reach for the water even in the dry seasons. And it's got leaves, which means that it can photosynthesize. You just need to make sure you've got enough sunlight. So that's something I don't think I'd really got my head around before. But again, that chimes in very much with what the New Testament says about maturity and discipleship. You know, Paul says to the Corinthians, he says, you know, uh, in relation to evil, be infants, but in relation to understanding, be perfect, teleos, uh, be mature. The old translation say in understanding being men, but it doesn't mean that. It means it means be fully mature. Again, in Ephesians, he talks about us growing up into the head, which is Christ, so that we may be mature. Jesus says, well, again, most translations say be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. But again, the word there is teleos. Reach your goal. Reach your, your, your goal of maturity because you you know as you grow you can feed yourself you can read the scriptures you share fellowship you 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 continue in prayer and you continue to learn things so so just as a tree has leaves which then feed it we too as mature disciples know how to feed and sustain ourselves so that we can be fruitful and we can be reproducing in terms of spiritual spiritual lives thank you that's so interesting and it's going to help us think i think about the the importance of pruning that it isn't just for our sake but it's so that we grow but also for us as a Absolutely. church planting church yeah. um part of that is to to see those those seedlings yeah. go beyond just us and see that in the future Absolutely. And I, and I think you're, you mentioned a pruning also. I mean, you asked me two questions. One is, what does a mature tree look like? But the other thing is, how do you get there? Now, of course, actually, when you've got a I, I'm I'm sowing seeds at the moment for my vegetable garden 
And when you sow seeds, when you have a, a, a new plant, a seedling or a sapling and you're planting a tree, actually there's lots and lots of things that you need to do. And that's relevant as well for you in terms of church planting. So for example, when you plant a tree, you must tie it to a support for the first five years because yeah. um, it, it needs to face the inclement weather. It needs to face the battering of the winds and it needs to do that so that it can go strong. But you need to provide the support appropriate to its level of maturity. So if you just stick a tree out in the middle of the, the wilds, it'll get blown over and uprooted. So you have to put a support there. As the tree grows stronger, you need less support. The same is true with things like feeding it. So again, in the first few years, you've got to make sure it's well watered. You know, Monty Don always says this on uh, when he's planting things out on, a, on, on the garden as well. Make sure you give it a good soaking to start with. You've got to provide the, the watering and the food so that the plant grows strong. As it grows stronger, you can pull back on the support and the feeding from the outside because it'll start to, as it puts roots down, it'll start to be able to resource itself. So there's a very clear sense of staging there. And I think what I found, what I'm very, very aware of in, in, as a gardener is that your, 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 your support on the one hand and you're exposing the plant, testing it, yeah. has to be in proportion to its maturity. So, for mm -hmm. instance, again, gardeners always talk about when you plant a plant, you then have to harden it off. So you keep it warm, you keep it nurtured, you keep it safe. But in order to prepare it for the real world, you have to gradually expose it to the inclemency of the weather, so the hot and the cold, the day and the night and so on. But you just have to do that in quite a controlled way so that it will grow strong and it will become mature. And again, it's really interesting that Peter uses this language as well. He, he talks about craving the pure spiritual milk. And then Paul says, you know, when you're young, we'll give you milk. But now, as you've grown up, now we give you solid food, we give you meat, you know, and again, it's another organic image of a child growing up and you change its diet in proportion to how mature it is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think that's going to give us a lot of food for thought, no pun intended, uh, as we <laughs> grow in our maturity. Um, and of course, so pruning much. is key because you say you have to prune out dead wood, you prune out that which is not producing fruit, and therefore, it, the, the, so you direct the life to really be fruitful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ian. Good to see you. Great to be with you, Eve.